Hi, I'm Tom from Red's Radio Control Models. What we have here today is the brand new Freewing F4 Phantom. This model is a beautiful model. It features a 9 blade 90mm fan, which is a little bit different than the standard 12 blade. It's 1750kV, so you'll get really good speed performance out of that, even though it's got a bifurcated exhaust. There is a second option, which is the ATS setup, which is a 1250kV 12 blade fan. And that fan's the same that's in the ATS Yak and the ATS F15. If you've flown those, the performance has really gone on that fan as well. This new 9-blade will offer slightly better efficiencies. The max amp draw is 105 amps, so it is really, really efficient with still about 3.8 kilo of thrust. So plenty of thrust to get it off the deck. The model features digital Metal Gear servos all round. The elevator is a standard sized servo at 30 grams, which is a really nice feature to see on a model of this size which is 1550 long, with all that power going through it's nice to have that little bit of extra power on your servo to be able to cope with the all-flying tail. The model has scale retracts, front nose gear sequencing, lights, and it's just got all the features that you expect from a super scale 90mm model. So without further ado, we'll get into the build. So again, with the free wing stuff, you get this long trailing wire that goes down the back of the fuselage. You do in the kit, you do get this little metal rod just there. That's so you can pull the wires through, but we won't worry about that for now because we've just got to glue it on. So, depending on what glue you're using, if you're using Hobby King glue or the general EPO glue that you do get with the free wing stuff, just mount it on one side. Make sure you put a generous amount on because this does hold your elevator halves on. Just glue it up on both sides, like so, and put some down on the rod as well, just to make sure that it doesn't pull out, because obviously you don't want it to. So plenty of glue. Then once you've got all your surfaces covered, just slide it in. You'll see that there's a little hole in the back here, where it locates into. So just pop your bit into the top there and then push it up nice and neat. Make sure that all your lines line up. Make sure that it's as square as you can. Again, make sure the fin's in the right place. You can drop your vertical stabiliser in on the top just to make sure it's all straight and lined up with this. I tend to like to do that just to make sure that is nice and square. Once you've put it in, if you're using contact glue, then pull it apart and let the glue just set very slightly. Once your glue's gone off for your tail section, the next thing to do is to take this bottom pan off. Just three screws, one, two, and then one at the back. Take that off and this whole top section will lift off. Next part is to put your elevators on. It's the same sort of system as on the Freewing F16, except this time you've got these nice metal parts that hold onto this metal rod here. They've already scored the metal so you don't have to worry about that. And as you can see you've got this nice standard size servo as well, already preset up. Just make sure that you centralise this on your radio. If you don't centralise it on your radio, when you plug it in it may be slightly out. So when you do it, I'm going to line it up with the point of this into here. Now the elevator position is a little bit lower than that for central but I can always adjust that once they're on. This is just so I know that I've got the elevators at exactly the same height. We have asked free ring if there is a possibility as this is a pre as a prototype that we have flat spots on the end so that way that it will be the same. Whether they do or not with the production run we don't know but that is a suggestion that we've put through. Make sure that when you do put it on these grub screws here you lock tight them in. Obviously it's metal to metal to metal, so you've not got to worry about it. Just make sure you don't get any onto this plastic bit here. I'm just going to put it on for you. I've already put Loctite into the grub screws. So all it is, is it's pushed on. Make sure that tip lines up. And then use your driver, or if you're using normal Allen keys, just to tighten it up. Like that. And then your Loctite will go off. And as you can see, it's actually a fairly firm system on there. Do the same with the other side, again let the Loctite go off and then it's all you've got to do then is put that central section back on the top with those three screws. Next bit to glue on is the arrestor hook. 
just mould it out of foam just sits against this back edge here and down into that slot there again a bit of contact adhesive I would sand this just to get rid of a little bit of the paint to give it a little bit more contact and again all the way up and we'll add a little bit of strength to this bottom edge here just to hold that in and it just literally pops in like that I'm just going to glue mine in now the next thing to do is to pull your wire for your elevator through the fuselage. I've already pulled the metal wire through. I find it easier if you go in this way with your hook just here. Then just hook your servo wire around it just like that. And then just pull it through. Just try and feed your wire through as straight as you can. Just so you're not going to be twisting it or pulling it around. I have seen some of the free wing kits like the MiG-21 where they've been pulled through so harshly that they've actually split the wire and then once it's through it should sit nicely in there like that. So the next step is to pull all the wires through from the vertical stabiliser. On the vertical stabiliser you have two wires, one for your LED and one for your main servo wire. It's up to you how you want to do it. I personally like to pull them through one at a time just so that I know I'm not straining any of the wires. So it's the same system push that all the way back through that little metal hook put one of the wires through and pull it through if you did want to pull two through that's fine the hook is big enough so I'm just going to do that now so once you've got your wires through all you need to do is just pull the wires tight enough through the fuselage so you know that they are all nice and tight so when they go in they're going to sit into this groove right here so just make sure that when you're pulling them through Again, you're not overstraining them, you're not doing anything that's going to cause any sort of damage to the servo wire itself. Just give it a gentle pull through. So once you've done that, just give all the wires a gentle pull. Make sure they're nice and tight and they're going to sit in this groove. Lift the tail up. And once you've done that, you should have these little tiny screws like this. Just put those, make sure they're going into the holes and they're located. You've got four, two on each side. Put those in those little holes there and then just tighten them up. The next bit is to put the wings on. You have two carbon wing spars that you're in your box. You've got a bigger one and a smaller one. That's where they sit. You'll also notice that you've got the nice ribbon cable that's the same that you get in the A10s uh, and also the Tiger Cat which makes the wing mounting really, really easy. Again, on the inside of the wing here, you've got your little plug that they go into. It's also detachable on the PCB, so you can get around to the other side if you do need to have a look at anything. So, again, nice and simple with free wing stuff, it always is. Just plug that connector in. I like to push these carbon rods a little bit further through for the first wing. Just plug that in on the inside of the wing like that. And once that's in, just push the wires back and then push your carbon spars into your wing, like so. They'll probably be a bit stiff to start with, but then you can just push them through nice and easy. Like so, find where they stop and then just make sure your wires aren't catching underneath and then just push it up nice and tight. Two screws, that's all you need. You've got two of these washered screws. They just drop down into these two holes here. And then with your screwdriver, just do those two up. Like so. And then do exactly the same on the other side. So the next thing to do is to glue all your pylons on. So you've got Two of the bigger pylons, which if you drop tanks, you'll notice that there's a nice wooden stick on there, so you can't get them the wrong way around. So that one goes on the other side, that one goes on this side like this. Just put a little bit of contact adhesive or CA, whatever you want to use on the inside of there, and then glue that in place there. As you can see, magnets on the top and for the weaponry. On this side, you've already got on the bottom of your missile rack the two holes like that so that just put goes on there like so and then slides back just like all the other free wing stuff then you've got your 
missile, dual missile pylon. Again, slots in there for the missiles, but this bit needs gluing on on the top surface here. So a bit of glue there, and then that slides in on top of there like that. So pretty simple. I'm just going to glue, glue all of those in. Your weaponry that you have is really nice. The missiles are already pre-painted with your black tips and all of your little fins. Then you get four of those, two for each side. And then you have your drop tank. Again, nicely painted to go with the colour scheme. Magnetic as well, and that just slides on the top of that. So while that glue is going off, the next thing you can do is you can be putting in all of the control horns. Use the instructions, it gives you all the length of the rods. Be aware that they all are slightly different lengths. The elevator push rod, you don't need to worry about that is already on the elevator and the nose gear steering push rod. What you've got to worry about is the flaps and the aileron and of course the rudder. The flap and the aileron are very similar. There's only five mil in difference. So you do need to just be careful of that one. And once you put all those on, then you should have some nice working control surfaces. Again, make sure that you centralize all the servos on your radio before you plug it all in. Otherwise you may end up with a bit of a shock when you plug it in and have to readjust it, which you don't want to have to do. As you can see, it's all ball links, nice scale, internal hinged, which is really nice. So you shouldn't see any gaps through them. Really nice features on it. And as you can see down here, you've also got the markings of where the hinge line is on the F4. So again, really, really nice. So the next bit, put the nose on. Really nice, magnetic. And what is really nice is they've actually made the nose cone out of fiberglass. So you've got your foam insert. The bottom bit there is also foam, but actually the inside is a fiberglass nose cone, so it's nice and solid. So again, that just puts in there, tongue and groove, and slots on like that, just get rid of the, some of the foam and that's the nose on so what we have in here are all the plugs so if you have a look down there you've got your elevator and rudder plugs then just to the left hand side of that just behind these plugs here you've got your two aileron plugs don't know whether you can see that you should be able to see that there just to the side, just into here, you've got your two little plugs that go in there. So your ones go on that side, your elevator and rudder go on that side. It's a little bit fiddly, but once they're in, you're all good. Once you've done all that, there's a little bit of other scale detail to put on. You've got these little aerials. They just sit on the top of there like that. A little bit of glue. Again, just holds them in place and just adds that little bit more scale detail. When you're setting your model up, make sure that your elevator has got an 8mm difference from here down to here. That is imperative for level flight, same as the F-16, it just needs that little bit of up to keep it flying. And obviously the last thing to do is to put your transfers on. They are water slide, so just be careful with them, make sure you're nice and slow putting them on. There are already some transfers applied but these ones will just finish the model off. So as you can see this is the Freewing F4 Phantom and when it's fully complete with all your transfers on it really really does look the part. You've got your dual landing light at the front which again is absolutely superb. Once you get it all set up it is really 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 nice. Uh, it, as you can see, it's also quite large, which is great. Sort of, probably I'd put it in the same sort of ballpark as the F-15 size-wise. The fuselage is quite broad and the wings are quite wide. So you do have plenty of wing area despite the weight being quite high on this model. Uh, it does fly on a 6S 5000 to 6000. Now I'm going to be flying mine on 5000s, I'm not too fussed about the flight time still be around about three minutes uh, but you'll just get a little bit less weight and as I fly off grass it just means it will get off the deck a little bit quicker than with the extra weight. We will also be doing a flight review uh, we're just waiting for good weather over here in the UK um, it's been too wet and too much snow so we're just waiting for that and also then we'll get the AS set up 
put in it and we'll also do a flight review on that one as well. Just so you can see the difference between the two. The 8S setup will be a little bit away because um, I want to get used to the 6S, see how it flies and be able to feedback in a couple of months on any hints and tips that I might have on that over the few months of flying it have happened or may need changes. At the minute there is nothing that I'd change on the kit. It's absolutely gorgeous. So we'll catch you at the flying field for the flying video.